the biggest secret of buying a car here in Canada 2024 or 2025 that salespeople, the financing officer or manager, the sales manager that they don't want you to know. I'll be covering all of this in this short video that is going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars in payments and money from my own experience, guys. And I have also sold tens and tens and tens of millions in real estate. I'm a professional sales guy. I've been doing it for past over. Now, it's my fourth year in real estate. So I literally help people spend millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars all the time on, on real estate. So what is it to buy a car? What is it to sell a car? It's nothing, guys. It is nothing. And yet, it can be the most stressful thing ever. It's really stressful for people to buy a car here in Canada because it's so unregulated. You're surrounded by crooks. You're surrounded by, well, salespeople. And if you go to Calgary police, like when I got cheated, when I purchased a car with the rollback odometer, guess what they told me? They said, oh, it's a consumer beware. You should have been well educated. You should have known better. So how do you find this? How do you get your money back? And how do you not get into that situation at first place? Well, I'm going to share with you in this video. And let all those Kijiji car flippers, salespeople, come down, comment in the comments down below and hate me for this video because I'm going to ruin a lot of people's business and I'm going to save you a lot of money in today's video. Well, guys, I'll tell you my story. I purchased my first car. I came as an international student to Canada with no money. And I had to, well, I had to have a couple of bumps on my head to learn about the cars. Now that I'm in sales and I'm doing it professionally and I live out of commission and I talk to other salespeople, they tell me and trust me way more than they will trust you with this information because you're not into sales. You don't know how it works. My negotiation with the car salesperson ends, uh, you know, the entire game ends when they find out that I'm a sales guy. Well, then they just start, they're like, okay, I know it's not going to work on you, so uh, this is what I want. I want to make money, and you, you need a car. So let's make a deal in such a way that I still make money, and you still get a car. And they become really transparent. They stop their BS when they know there is a salesperson in the room. But when they know that there is you in the room, I'll tell you guys, what do we do as a salespeople? So we sit in front of each other, and we handle objections. We practice. We practice. So anytime you walk into a salesperson's office or a car dealership, before you open your mouth, they already know the answer. They already handled that objection, guys. They already, they're like, okay, so, uh, you, you, you know, I, I, I have this answer to the salesperson. They already have an answer for your answer. You have an objection, they have an answer for that objection. And you know how they do that? Two salespeople sit next to each other and one person tries to sell and the other person tries to object and the first person has to come up with the objections and then they practice and practice and they practice and then you walk into a dealership and you are unarmed. You, you have no idea that whatever you think and whatever you have in your mind, they already know the answer for that and they already know how to answer it to make it more likely for you to buy. Your, their goal as you walk into a car dealership is to get your deposit so you're more likely to buy the car so you don't walk out. You don't. You come in, you put a deposit of your credit card, and then you walk out with the car. So the goal of it is you're coming in, they get your deposit, and then you get your car keys, and then you go out and basically they make the commission, and it's all about the commission. Now another guy's thing. So first thing you have to know is I purchased my first car, and it was Toyota Echo. 2020, uh, I think it was 2003 or 2004, and I didn't know at that time what rebuild status is. So it's no longer a Toyota if it's rebuilt. It's no longer a Japanese car because somebody crashed the car, made an insurance claim, it was not operational, and then they fixed it, and now they're selling it because it was totaled, it was destroyed. Now it has a rebuild status. So now if you're new to Canada, you know what rebuild status is. Second part about it is trading in cars. If you are trading in cars, guys, I'll leave my contacts in the description of this video. I have my email there. You can just, if you really want to lose money and do like for, for nothing, guys, there is my email. You can just e-transfer me $5,000 right now. That is what you do 
each time you just trade in your car. Sorry, car dealerships, sorry, salespeople, you hate me for this. And you know why people do that? Because, in, in, for example, guys, I work in real estate. I am a realtor with the experience here in Calgary, Alberta, guys. And real estate is so regulated. We have realtors, we have professional salespeople with license regulated who are offering you services. You have one professional person on one side, one professional person on the other side. We work together, we make things happen, and we have two lawyers involved. We have mortgage brokers, we have bankers, we have home inspectors, we have so many professionals involved in our industry, and everyone is, well, everyone is getting paid, everyone is, ha is happy, so it's so regulated, it's so easy, so much easier. But when you are buying a car, it's like you are walking on your own into, well, into the wolf's nest. You know, you come in, you have no idea. You, maybe you have more experience in buying and selling cars because, well, how many houses do people buy, in a, a, guys, a, in a year? Well, you know, you know, let's say one, two, three. Well, I did more than, wait, guys, I did more than 30 houses in a year. And it's like purchased and sold. You know, that's like 10 times in a year. That's 10 times more than people actually buy and sell in a lifetime. In one year, and I've been doing it my fourth year is now in real estate. So I'm just telling you guys how much more experienced I am in, a, in a houses versus somebody who is just buying or selling a house. Same thing in at a higher scale, at a car dealership, by salespeople. And guess what, guys? Guess what happens when you walk into the dealership? You're getting screwed. So here's what happened to me, guys. I purchased a car in the past, Hyundai Santa Fe as well. And a rolled back odometer. And then, guess what? I went to the police station and they said, oh, the cust customer, beware. Just means that you should have been smarter next time. Next time, do your own research. And that's why I'm making this video for you guys so that you make your own research and you don't lose your money. I sold that Hyundai Santa Fe when I, I was not a sales guy at that time. But the problem with me is I'm too honest. I don't like cheating people. So I disclosed that there was a rolled back odometer and I lost money on that. Because I just don't think it's ethical to cheat people when you're selling. But the car salespeople is the bottom level, bottom level in sales, not the lowest level, like smartphones, let's say. You know, you go into those boutiques where they're selling you cell phones and different plans, or, you know, door to door, let's say, loan moving services or window washing with this uh, brushes they walk around. It's not as bad as that. But, you know, I just want to say that, guys. Uh, they're there. They're there for for commission. And uh, when you are going to Kijiji, when you're going to Facebook Marketplace, shopping for a car, there is there is a chance that that person is flipping cars. I know a few people who flip cars. They do it for a living, so they don't give a damn. They will cheat you if they have to. And honestly, guys, you know how they think? Well, if you find some problem with the car and you didn't buy, there will be another person foolish enough not to do their homework who is going to fall for it, and they'll still sell it. That's their logic. You have to know how cars are getting sold, guys. So, salespeople, sorry, guys. Dealerships, sorry. Sales managers, sorry. Uh, guys, you trade in a car, and when you're trading in the car, you know, the average commission for every trade-in, well, they have to make as a dealership at least $5,000. Not commission, but for the dealership, salespeople don't get paid full commission. So, when you trade in a car, consider it this. It's same as... You hit in my email address and you just do an e-transfer to your guy Igor for a good advice for $5,000. You know why people do that? First, understand why you are doing that. You are probably thinking you don't know much about cars. Maybe you're not a salesperson. Maybe you're not good at negotiating. You don't want to handle the objection. You don't want to make a deposit to the bank. So uh, this is why I'm making you this video, guys. And it's going to save you thousands of dollars on that. So first of all, you know what's rebuild status now by watching this video. I'll tell you the odometer was rolled back. So if you get cheated, you're literally on your own. <laughs> That's why people trade in the car. They are like, oh, I don't want to be cheated. So first understand why you're wanting to trade in. And I want to say, guys, if you are a bad salesperson, uh, or you were told that you're a bad salesperson. Guys, I was told by multiple people that I'm a bad salesperson. And, uh, you know, and I thought to myself, maybe I'm a bad salesperson. And, that, and now after doing tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars in real estate, oh, uh, you know what? Maybe I'm not that bad of a salesperson. And it's funny. I didn't know that I'm a, actually a salesperson. I'm doing sales. For past four years, that is my, it's my living, it's my fourth year in real estate. I'm doing only sales and commission. What the hell? So guys, if somebody told you you're, you're a bad salesperson, maybe you're not that bad. Maybe they were not right about you. But I want to say, guys, one thing is, don't worry. 
You can do this. Guys, here's what is happening with the dealership. I'll tell you how they cheat you, and therefore you will know how to act. Instead of me just telling you what to do, I'll tell you what is actually happening. I'll tell you the truth right now. And you'll be able to use this to make money for yourself. Okay, so first of all, interest rates. Why do you get such amazing interest rates when you are buying a new car? Guess why? why? Comment down below why you think that they're so cheap to, to get a good interest rate when you're buying a used car. Okay, yeah, oh, maybe they have a better condition with the lender. They are buying down your rate with the lender. My wife is a mortgage broker working with DLC Clear Trust Mortgages. She is a salesperson for loans, for mortgages, lines of credit, things like that. And I know more about mortgages. I'll leave contact in the description of this video in case you need a mortgage or a home line of equity or whatever with the best possible interest rates. I'll leave the contacts for you guys. But here's what mortgage brokers talk to financing guys. And here's what you find out. So. The, you just have to know, it's the same thing in the real estate, same thing with the builders, it's same thing with the car finance. They put it in a price, they buy down the rate. First of all, that dealership sends most of their clients to one particular lender and that lender gives them a preferred rate. Now, their dealership is going to also pay commission to their salesperson, right? And uh, so that not the lender usually pays the commission. You know why they do that? This way, the dealership can actually, well, guys, I'm saving you a lot of money right now. My wallet came out. You, this way, dealerships can actually put that commission, the extra interest rate that you don't see on the paperwork. Great, I got such a good deal. I'm saving so much money. But it is in the price of MSRP of that new car that you're buying. Congratulations. You are being fooled, my friends. You are still paying a full price for your interest rate. In term, you know, oh, 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 I'm saving 2%, but I'm paying 10% more for what I should be paying. So you think you're winning, and that's how the kind of the sales work. You think you're winning, but you're actually losing. I mean, at least for cars. You know, it's, it's different for real estate, but people would be arguing, oh, realtors are cheating people and everything and everything. Guys, I don't do business like that. I don't cheat people. I believe in honesty and transparency, and that's why I don't sell cars. And that's why I'm ruining other people's business right now. So you are literally, I'm ruining the car industry business here in Canada by you watching this video and getting you educated. You are paying more for the car, and you think you're saving money. And this way, it's a win-win situation. The dealership, you get uh, something that you think you're winning on the interest rate, and you get a car which is, uh, well, whatever, you know, and uh, at a better interest rate, why can't you not get the same interest rate for a used car? Because you cannot really put uh, that markup on MSRP on a used car, but you can do it on a new car, just so you know. And all the and also, guys, all the packages and upgrades on the, or your car uh, that you get at the dealership, congratulations, you're also getting cheated. Guys, you know, that when I purchased my car, when I purchased my Subaru at a dealership, I got an auto starter, and then I had some problems with it. So I went to Visions, Visions Electronics here in Calgary, Alberta, and then I found out that Visions actually installed my car starter. So what you don't know, guys, a lot of these big brand retailer dealerships, well, they outsource their services to smaller mechanics. So a lot of times you're paying a premium just because you go into a brand name. They are giving the deal to a specific supplier of that services, getting a really cheap price, cheaper than you or me would ever get because they're sending a lot of clients to that mechanic for doing that specific services. So they get like a brand deal and they charge you premium because you didn't go directly to them. So first of all, you could have just went directly to them and saved some money, but now you're going to a brand that is giving you that, but actually you're going back to that mechanic that is also sent their services to that brand. How about that? Yeah, I also saved you some money. You didn't know that. How about the biggest scam in a dealership about the certified uh, used cars where their mechanic looks at it? Guys, it's, it's like you're going to a builder where they're saying, no, don't worry about the mortgage brokers and don't worry about the, 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 the lawyers. You'll, we'll provide you with the lawyer and a mortgage broker. And all of a sudden, instead of you, you're like, I'm going to save some money. I'm going to go with the lawyer from the builder. Now you're using their lawyer that has a relationship with them. What's the conflict of interest, you might ask? <laughs> it's interesting. It's a, it's a funny topic to talk about. But anyways, you are literally falling into the trap in the same way uh, you know, with the dealership, if you're going with their mechanic, 
who inspected their car guys i purchased i purchased an oil leaking cars and oil burning cars from dealerships in the past hear me out if you're buying a car from a dealership doesn't matter is it if, which brand it is guys you know like it uh, doesn't matter where you go and what logo it has and uh, is uh, you know you know which, which dealership or car dealership you go here in calgary you when you're buying a used car even if it's certified and everything you ask them if you can take it to your own mechanic and don't go to a mechanic next door a lot of these dealerships they already have connections with all the mechanics and one hand shakes another hand so they sometimes the dealership would say hey you can go to that mechanic and they have already an agreement where that mechanic is not going to find anything wrong with the car because they are shaking hands and that's how they do business you find some mechanic that you can trust far away from the dealership so they don't have that kind of relationship and if you say to the dealership hey i want to inspect they'll give you three list of three different mechanics don't go to those three different mechanics because that's probably again the handshakes guys you have to think like i i just ruined a lot of uh, business for car dealerships for their mechanics for their margins for their trade-ins for their financing all the weather packaging big scam big scam mechanics big scam outsourcing their services big scam so basically guys whatever you think whenever you go into dealership you meet a big 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 well it's a system it's not a scam uh, honestly guys you have to get the, they have to make money somehow and you are the source for them to make money and it's your problem to pay off your loans hear me out guys i want to give you a quick tip if you are ever planning to buy a house in canada as a new immigrant or whatever the less debt you have the better so consider buying your car for cash or if you are planning to buy a home condo or anything guys first of all contact my wife she's a mortgage broker she'll help you out with the mortgage i am a realtor with the experience in calgary alberta my wife is a mortgage broker with dlc clear trust mortgages contacts will be in the description of this video but i'll tell you guys that when you're buying one of those assets uh, the car loan is not going to let you well guys you will have trouble qualifying for a mortgage or they're not going to give you as a good of an interest rate so be very careful when you're buying cars if you don't have cash now guys you know how not to get cheated how do you get uh, you, how do you negotiate in terms of the car guys first of all whether you're selling or buying a car there will be people like i'll give you this price or i walk away guys i had i was selling i was selling a toyota highlander in my previous video if you watched it from you know from my last year i will leave in the description of this video check it out i was telling you how to buy a car and i said i love my highlander so much guys i was selling my highlander i had people who were coming to me with ridiculously low ball amounts on kijiji and they were like oh i'll give you this it's not worth that much guys it's just funny i just say to these people i'm saying if you are offering me a honda civic price for a toyota highlander that just means to me that you cannot afford buying such a car and you literally have to go and buy a honda civic like it's just so funny to see this robo negotiation techniques guys i don't say you shouldn't be doing it i say you try to negotiate go to kelly blue book, blue book check out there is a special tab on kgg where you can see if it's a fair price or not check out what the dealerships are selling and uh, see who are the private sellers private sellers should be at least a couple of thousand dollars cheaper than a dealership guys i don't even know why you would be buying a used car from a car dealership well maybe the ease of transaction and financing you can literally go and uh, there is a credit union next to me a service credit union i believe and just get a car loan from them that's where the dealerships get from probably would get a better deal as well you don't really need to go it's just it's just just so that you don't use your brain the entire thing is made out of money so that you don't have to do anything but if you do not know what you do not know now i told you how you're getting screwed i gave you some ideas guys you give this video a like you subscribe to this channel i'll give you some more tips right now in terms of negotiating guys i'll tell you that okay if you still want to go to a dealership go ahead but you know what is happening now right so what happens is the dealership is they are getting the car somebody lazy enough like uh, sometimes i felt like doing the trading because guys i sell real estate sometimes i'm just too busy with selling real estate but you know what the amount of money you lose by trading in your car is actually very compatible to what you can get from real estate transaction so i would rather freaking sell my own car plus it's so easy now guys in terms of buying or selling the cars so uh, first of all if you are buying a car take it to a mechanic get it inspected 
You know, guys, there are so many, so much of cheating business happening in the cars. You're like, oh, Igor, I'm just going to inspect myself. I know myself. Guys, there are people who would clean up the oil leak. There are people who are going to just clean it up. There are people who are going to be cheating things like that. There are people who buy cars, fix cars. And, you know, oh, you found something. They would go and they would clean it up. They'll try to fix it up. And they'll search for another buyer for them to buy. There are people who are doing professionally. I personally know few people who professionally flip cars in Calgary under the table besides their side hustles they fix cars they flip cars and you can fall easily a victim to those guys because they they don't care they don't have morals and uh, that's their business and there is no not much regulation like real estate for example in canada you go and go to police and they'll be like yeah go to court you go to court and it's a contract that said as is and now you're screwed so first of all be careful when you're signing a contract when it says as is any car you buy if they don't let you drive it you don't buy it if they don't let you put the number plate, take it on the highway, and especially if they say no to a mechanic, that's a red flag. Understand the red flags. If they don't want you to do something with the car, to check it out, to test it out, take it to a mechanic, get it professionally inspected at your own place, that is, that's a red flag. Why are they not letting you do that? Because maybe they're afraid that you'll find something, guys. So first of all, take it to a mechanic. Come look at the market. See what the fair value is. Try to negotiate your price down. And guys, in, the, in sales, if you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't ask for a lesser price, you will never get a lesser price. It's a simple courtesy to ask for less when you're buying a car. You don't have to insult the person and say, I want it for free. But always ask it's just guys negotiation is literally talking you talk to people you know if the, uh, you are selling a car or you are buying a car and they bring a bunch of relatives they surround surround you and they try to emotionally kind of pressurize you stay out of it if they are trying to pressurize you it could be a sales technique so that you don't ask too many questions and to bring in people a lot of people they bring their entire freaking families to pressurize you and you're there by yourself you're like ah, uh, uh, if you feel any kind of pressure where you're like okay now and you don't know if you're making the right decision maybe you're not making the right decision walk away think about it come back think about it do don't ever be pressurized by anyone when you're buying or selling a real estate or or a car guys if that car gets sold to somebody else i'm pointing out the blue rav4 parked outside of my of my house for my neighbors and i'm telling you guys you should understand this right now there will be another car there might be a better car you'll find your car market is alive the car that you're searching for might not be on the market that same day it might come out next week there will always be another car when you're buying a car also get a bank draft you know, for example, when where do you buy a car? You can go to a police station. You can do transactions with the police. Be careful. Uh, sometimes people produce a fake bank draft. So you don't want to get the fake bank draft. So you want to be there at the bank teller. I literally go with those people and I want to see that bank draft given to that person, to a bank teller, and I do the entire transaction at a bank teller. Guys, it's stupid how unregulated and how chaotic the car sales business is in Canada. I'm just freaking disappointed that I can... Guys, I can help you buy or sell millions and millions of dollars in real estate and you are way more protected than when you're buying cars. Yet for the cars, you have no resources, no support. Government doesn't give a damn and you're on your own at your own mercy when you're buying a car. You can get fake money. There were occasions that people told me stories about fake cash that they gave him, fake bank draft. So uh, that's why people trade in the car. They just want to handle it. And it's absolutely understandable. But right now, I'm saving you a lot of money, guys. When you're buying a car, okay, it, you go take it for a highway, go for a drive, look underneath. And guys, if these guys are professional sales guys, they will probably hide everything from you. So you'll still get screwed. So take it to a mechanic that you know. And when you're getting the money, take it to the teller. Take it to the bank. See the bank draft produced in front of you. If they say no and they don't want to do that, why do they not want to do that? Why? Oh, oh they're going to come up with a lot of excuses. That's a red flag. If they don't, if you're selling the car or you're buying the car and you know, like something like that happens and you feel something is off, it's probably off. So uh, back out. Back out. Back out. And also, most, just so you know, most of the deposits in car dealerships are refundable. And uh, if you felt like you were pressurized by a sales guy, you can get that money back and you can back out. And that's one thing that 
people who don't want you to know. So just be very mindful in your money spending here in Canada. It's so easy to get in debt, so easy to be screwed by the entire system. The banks, you every time you walk in, they try to sell you their products, waters products, line of credit, credit cards. That is called product. They get commission. Salespeople, or you think a bank is your friend, or you think a financial advisor is your friend. Guys, I am your friend. I am telling you that those sales guys get commission for selling you a product. They get points. They get special uh, benefits for it. Car salespeople, same thing. You walk out of Walmart, there is a direct energy guy. Hi, I get better rates for you. Sales guy too. Everywhere sales people. You walk into real estate, you see my face. Sales guy too. And guess what? We make a living from from commission. But I feel that most uh, professional level of of making sales is actually in the relationships. It's about educating people and helping them make educated choices and saving the money that's that's why i'm into real estate because in real estate is the only place where i can actually save money for the buyers and i can make money for the sellers at the same time it's a win-win situation and guess what i get also paid because that's how sales works and i have the knowledge and skills to do that and i decided to share this video with you guys now i'm probably going to get kicked out from all the dealerships here in canada they're not going to let me in. And if I ever leave real estate, they're not going to give me a job. They'll be like, Igor, screw you because you screwed us. Anyways, I hope I saved you a ton of money, guys. Uh, websites, you know where to search for cars. There's so many of them, right? You can go to Auto Trader. You can go to Kijiji. You can go to Facebook Marketplace. A ton of websites. Leave a comment down below which website you're using. Tell me how you got cheated. I got cheated by rollback odometer. I got cheated by buying a... a the rebuild status car. I didn't know about that. I got cheated by buying a car from a dealership that was leaking oil, and I got cheated by buying a car that from a dealership that was burning in oil from reputable big brand dealerships, not like uh, one of those used car dealerships, but actually really, 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 really good ones. And uh, yeah, they deny everything, and they and they do a really sloppy job and. You're on your own when you find out. They're like, oh, it's not us. Uh, it must have happened later. And guys, I even had a, I even went to a car dealership and I had one guy showing me pictures of my car, which was not even a picture from underneath my car. It was some other cars. Welcome to Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah, best country in the world. And now you know. And now subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in the next video. Your guy, Igor. Ow.